Well, if I could catch you on cheating, then we could reverse <laughs> the results of this game. My hounds charged in. Again, um, I, I was just kind of testing out this unit. Hounds were a great unit in seventh. Um, I loved them. I, I dare say my list depended on them. Um, my list before the heavy hitters were my Zinch casters and my flesh hounds. Today I put both both my previous five man units of flesh hounds into a big unit of ten and put in my BSB, and I charged into those knights thinking I was going to cream them. I challenged out his hero and did nothing to him, which was awesome. And then my flesh hounds did nothing to his unit, which was was also really awesome. And I think this ended up being probably one of the most epic challenges that I've ever had with some really fantastic roles on my part. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, you, actually, you actually did do a killing blow, but... Uh, killing... Oh, uh, sorry. This is looking... Peeking a little bit into the future. I did a killing blow every turn for the rest of the game. But, okay, continue. <laughs> but I have a, a three-up ward, which isn't a guarantee, but, it, you know, I saved it that turn, and we kept on beating each other up. Uh, my knights managed to cause... Uh, two wounds and lose none back. Um, he added one to his resolution with his friggin' banner there. So uh, I still won by one, but he passes and he reformed to get more of his hounds into combat. You know, I almost took the um, the banner of sundering or the sundering standard this game. Um, I don't know why, maybe because I ran in seventh a lot, but I'm glad I didn't. The banner of unholy victory was awesome for me. Every time. Every time I needed it, it rolled a two, two or a three to the combat resolution, which was great. So on my turn two, I attempted to charge the corn warriors to into the bloodletters' flank, and I only needed a five on two d six, which isn't too hard. But I rolled a double one, and they failed. So it happens. That's fine. Uh, the Marauder shuffled up a little bit more. I planned on taking on the Daemoness, as crazy as that might sound. I had moved my Sorcerer Lord out of the unit <clears throat> before that, before I moved up, so I could prevent him from being assassinated. Although that could have been a bit of a mistake later on, which I, I realized that at the time, but I really didn't think about it before I did it. The uh, knights were already in combat, and the hell cannon was also in combat. So that's pretty much where I stayed, and the knights, uh, the warriors in the building stayed where they were as well. I got eight dice for my uh, magic phase, which was... Which uh, was a trend that continued throughout the rest of the game. <laughs> I, I, I got another good phase. I don't think they were all too bad. But uh, I tried to cast Miasma, which is the uh, either lower the weapon skill or initiative... Um, and that got dispelled. Uh, and I was using these these smaller spells to bait out the dice so I could cast the ones that I really wanted to get through. I'm not a huge fan of rolling six dice for every spell. I try to cast as many as I can and get enough spell effects out there to, to help me. You know, obviously my list is a little defensive, so reducing toughness or reducing something else to give me an edge of combat is definitely a bonus. So the Miasma got dispelled. They got the toughness reduced by two on the Hounds, which is tremendous. Um, and it comes into play a lot later on. Um, in combat, the Hell Cannon completely luckily dodged dying uh, by only taking one more wound. And he did enough back where you know they ended up tying combat. Actually, I don't think he did anything. He just ended up tying. Um, so which, we were stuck there. Which, which means you have one wound left on that Hell Cannon. Right. Because you made you had you had two saves to make. You made one of them. Yeah, I never made a, a chaos dwarf ward save, so that didn't come into play for me. But uh, yeah, monsters and handlers are broken. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the five or six goes to a handler, which really has no effect on the monster. That I, I feel like they kind of they kind of flubbed on the monsters and handlers, making the hydra even better. Well, the the hydra is initiative. Two or one, I can't remember. So that's like a, a a bit of a nerf right there to it. I mean, everything else got better, so maybe it's on the same level. But with initiative two, it gets charged, and it's probably going to get hit first. And with the flaming banner out there, I don't think it'll be do, doing that much better. But obviously, people were probably going to take two 
I haven't played a lot of Dark Elves yet, so who knows. The Hell Cannon, I think, is probably justified because it's a fairly expensive model, but maybe not anymore. 205 points. Yeah, 205. Yeah. So, I mean, with the changes with no Pretty partials. for what you're getting. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a lot better than it used to be. In the combat with the Knights, uh, the challenge happened again. We're both striking on the same initiative. I hit him four times. I wound him four times. Uh, only one goes through, though. Uh, I make all my saves, of course. I put four more wounds on the dogs. So, But I managed to lose one. Finally. And... Uh, you added 2D resolution, which barely squeaked you up to losing only by one, but you passed anyway. Yeah, with the reroll, uh, that makes me leadership seven. It's pretty easy to pass. Next turn, I kind of took a gamble um, and charged my demonets into the marauders. I was thinking... Definitely not a gamble, but the... They weren't supported, which I think was their ultimate downfall. Well, it was a gamble in that I knew I wasn't going to run you through the first turn, and I knew if I had a flank charge from those warriors, I was done for. I did bring the Banner of Ecstasy with me, uh, which is first, uh, stubborn on the first break test, which would hold me there for a while. My ultimate goal here was just to tie these two units up and not to actually win, because VPs don't matter in the Watchtower scenario, which is... Kind of weird to wrap your head around. Uh, I also brought my horrors up, planning to charge them into the building the next turn and use their spells. And I was thinking that my flamers in the rear of those knights, combined with the rest of the unit of the flesh hounds and my now wounded BSB, would be really great. Uh, if you see those two little wa markers there with the orc heads, those are my toughness. My toughness is two <laughs> on my entire unit, um, and that's huge. Uh, this is the second time I've played against uh, Laura Shadow uh, with a level four caster, and both times they just target my nasty units and lower the toughness of the game over pretty much for that unit. With a toughness of two or three or one, there's not much you can do when you're talking about really elite troops like this that usually rely on their survivability. A lot of people talk, too, about using death as their lore, and it's got a lot of nice sniping spells, and it has the purple son of Zerus, or whatever it is. Xerxes? Xerxes. No, is it? I don't it, know. Whatever it is. It's, you know, it's a nice spell, but it doesn't work against everybody. And against my list, everybody has a, a good enough ward save. Uh, or magic resistance that the snipe spells aren't just aren't going to work. So the, the the purple sun is useless against initiative five, and everything else is useless. So shadow just seems like a, a a much better, more flexible option when you're playing against a wide variety of opponents. Well, the magic phase went um, basically how it would go the rest of the game. I I didn't really get anything off, or actually I'm sure of it. I didn't get anything off. <laughs> I threw six dice at a spell, and you were able to meet the value and dispel it, uh, which is frustrating because I roll, and I'm thinking, wow, what a great roll. He's only got four dice. There's no way you can do it, and you do it. Having the plus four to your dispelling, where I only Tremendous. have the plus two to my casting, was pretty huge. Um, had I taken the banner of sorcery, which is plus one to casting for the unit, uh, I'm not sure. In seventh edition, they made it so that the level two wouldn't benefit from that. I'm wondering if he benefits now in 8th edition since that's not in the FAQ anymore. I'm going to have to check again. I'm yeah. not sure. Uh, in the combat against the Marauders went as kind of as I expected it. I've got the re-rolls to, on the hit, to hit rolls. I've got the re-rolls on the to hit because I have always strikes first and a higher initiative. And Demonets have always been an anti-light infantry unit and I'm getting an immense amount of attacks here. I was able to kill eight to you killing, what'd you kill, one? Killed two. Two? Oh, excellent. My champion stayed alive in the challenge, though. Oh, yeah, challenge. Three attacks, three whiffs. Uh, it, and with the steadfast, obviously, uh, you didn't break. Around. You got a BSB there who's in the combat who didn't really, I think he might have been your two wounds that you caused. Yeah, most likely. Uh, luckily, I didn't have to blow my stubborn banner yet because I need it next turn 
Uh, you did put the blood letters into the warriors in the tower again, which I ended up <laughs> yeah. killing seven of them. And uh, you pretty much whiffed, and then they were destroyed from combat resolution. Yeah, that was one where I rolled an 11 on my, on my uh, break test, re-rolled it for the BSB and got a 10. <laughs> so that unit was wiped, um, which was really... I don't think it was that surprising when you think about the numbers, but to me at the time, I really felt like I was getting boned uh, because in my mind, that unit was going to roll over your guys. But again, I'm in that 7th edition mindset where I win by one, you're on double ones. Right. Uh, no more fear auto break. Yeah, and you didn't fail any of your fear checks. so I did once, but it wasn't. It was no. only my sorcerer. And it wasn't, right, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and then we had the combat against the, the knights against the flesh hounds again. You got another killing blow, which I saved, but my knights totally whiffed. But what really was kind of crazy is that my horses caused uh, three wounds because you're now toughness two, they're strength four. So two's two wound. That's just ridiculous. So they caused two wounds uh, and had me winning, but you added three with that silly banner. But I fortunately managed to pass my break test on that. And I passed the turn. I'm, I'm down to four dogs and a BSB, and I'm definitely I'm feeling like... I'm feeling like that that flank is not going to hold, and I'm not going to be able to take that unit out of the building. It's getting pretty clear at this point. I'm, I'm going to need some pretty lucky turns. Uh, it, I felt like if I held the knights one more turn, though, and those flamers were able to charge in, uh, my horrors would be able to do it, given, a, given enough time, and especially if I was able to get off the spell that gives me plus four to my toughness which would have been huge as far as combat resolution goes. I would have been forcing you to take those break tests because I don't think you would have been able to roll the sixes needed and then get through my four-up ward. But instead, on your turn, <laughs> things didn't go well again. Yeah, I, I got my corn warriors into the flank of the Demonets, which is what I definitely wanted. Those marauders were not going to survive very long without that. Um... That was really it for movement. The, the cannon was dead, and I don't have a lot of units. So uh, in the magic phase, I cast Miasma on the Daemonettes, which is the reduced weapon skill or initiative or movement or ballistic skill. And my intent was to reduce their initiative by at least two, their initiative five. So if I got them to three, they would lose their rerolls. Which he let it go, and I did manage to roll high enough, so they were initiative three, uh, which gave me a massive leg up in the combat. Um, I also did withering again on the flesh hounds, which he failed to dispel. Yeah, well, I saved all my dispel dice for this spell because I, I obviously I couldn't afford to. It was critical. To let it through, yeah. and the the initiative one, I wasn't really worried about. All that would happen is I lose the reroll, which isn't huge compared to the minus two toughness. Which, well, it's, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a big nerf. I mean, re-rolls, it's, you know, instead of hitting 6, you know, 80%, 80 to 90% of the time, you're only hitting 60 or 70% true, of the but, time. True, but, well, I mean, with a losing combat, you know, what's the point of those re-rolls, really? Right. It's not a VP. There's no half points anymore. I, Just focusing point, on what's important. Yeah, I, I had stubborn on those girls. I knew they were going to stay around for one more turn, and I wanted to keep my flesh hounds alive so I could get that flank charge off. Didn't happen, obviously. Uh, I, did, I don't even think I came close, even though I was throwing one more die than you for dispel. Yeah, in the in the combat with the Daemonettes, uh, you knocked out only four Marauders this time instead of the eight last time. And uh, with the Corn Warriors in there, I caused nine on you. Uh, obviously, you had to use your stuff in there, but you stuck around. Um, against the Flesh Hounds, I finally killed your Herald. Knights killed another two flesh hounds, and the horses caused three more wounds, but you saved all those. Um, but the combat rate just was too much, and your, your flesh hounds were removed from the table. Yeah, it was. Uh, I, I rolled the exact amount to do four wounds, which was exactly enough to take away my two remaining flesh hounds, which was terrible because at that point, it's, I was ready to extend the hand, say, game over.